Good evening, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues and friends, I would like to warmly welcome to our 22nd annual conference of the Forum Macroeconomics and Macroeconomic Policies, or FMN, in short, here in Berlin. You know, this research network usually looks a bit more on the demand side than other economists do. Nevertheless, I would like to start out talking a little bit about the supply side. It doesn't look like it now because there are still some seats empty, but we are running this year into severe supply side constraints. Um, we had more people uh, registering than usual. We had to make a cut at 380 participants, and over the past weeks we had to, well, send people, or not send them physically away, but deny them being put on the list. The result was that this morning we had many more people in the room than we had on the list, because people obviously didn't take no for an answer and showed up nevertheless. I hope uh, we still have enough food and drinks here, so if something goes wrong there, it's not just our fault, but uh, yeah, this is a, a common uh, good problem, obviously. Um, anyway, we are extremely, on the other hand, of course, um, we are very proud that we are seeing this growing and huge interest in our conference and that therefore demand outstrips supply here sometimes. Um, however, you know from macroeconomics that demand outstripping de uh, supply sometimes can have negative effects and so we also have some side effects here. Uh, also for the selection of the presentations, uh, these slots are limited. We just have six rooms, and so we run six parallel sessions, and we just have a number of days. So um, overall, we have roughly 140 slots here, or 140 presentations. Nevertheless, we have heard from a number of colleagues that they were very unhappy because they have thought to have handed in a very good paper, and they had presented before, and they felt that they are very imminent in the community, and nevertheless, some of them have not been accepted. So I apologize for that. We run a policy where the abstracts are evaluated by some of our coordination group, and some papers just didn't make it. It doesn't mean they were not good papers, but it just meant that for some reason other papers got higher points um, in this case. So. Um, well, sorry for that, and if you talk to someone who didn't come this year and now feels, uh, I don't know, put back, maybe you can explain that to that person. Anyway, um, coming back to this success, uh, this success in terms of growing interest is basically a continuation of the trend we have seen over the past years. Over the years, this conference has established itself as one of the biggest annual economic, uh, macroeconomist conferences in Europe. And we are particularly proud that we are increasingly drawing a young crowd and that we have excellent papers from our young colleagues and young economists. This year, our conference is titled 10 Years After the Crash. What have we learned? And in fact, we are, in a, to a certain extent, winners from this crisis. Because one of the reasons why so many people are showing up here is the crisis and what the people felt, the reaction of mainstream macroeconomics to it. Ten years ago, almost ten, exactly ten years ago, we had this memorable moment when Lehman Brothers defaulted and the money markets and financial markets across the world froze over. And, um, well, this has caused a lot of discontent among some people with the state of macroeconomics as it was perceived at that time. The fact that large parts of the profession had priorly ignored or at least played down the risk of asset price bubbles and the potential for financial crisis pulling the world economy to the brink of a recession led many economists to look for alternative approaches. In many countries, we have seen student initiatives springing up that demanded a broader approach to economics education and especially more pluralism in teaching and research. In some countries, such as the UK, parts of the establishment, such as the Bank of England, supported this process. In other countries, such as Germany, at least in my perception, the reaction of the mainstream was much more muted, and this helped to push skeptical minds into the arms of alternatives. And as is evident in our success here in the growing numbers of papers and participants, a significant number of these people seem to have discovered the FMM as a good source where they can find and discuss such alternatives. Many of the topics and mechanisms which had been at the heart of the crisis of 2008-2009 and the Euro crisis which followed after that actually in fact had been touched upon at our conferences even prior to the crisis. For example, I looked up the program from the 2008 crisis. This was, um, well, or from 
not from the crisis, but from the conference during that crisis. And the conference was here at the end of October, so just a few weeks after um, Lehman Brothers default. But of course, we had prepared the conference beforehand. And one of the persons who was speaking here was Charles Goodhart, the British macroeconomist, who for a very long time had, in the 1990s and 2000s, had worked on um, the continuing relevance of distinguishing between liquidity and solvency problems. Um, and especially the, lender of, or the need for a lender of last resort in the form of a central bank. Actually, that's something which many modern macro models at that time did completely ignore. And um, I know from many of us here, including me, that we were teaching Bateshot and Goodhart in our monetary economics classes at that time. But I know that many mainstream departments had dropped that. And so, um, at least my feeling is that some of the students we had might have been better prepared to explain what was happening in 2008 and 2009. And by the way, um, I looked further back to 2007. We then had a conference here titled at European Integration in Crisis, and there were a number of papers there which were warning against increasing divergences in the Eurozone. I mean, that was a time when, when I was presenting such a paper at a mainstream conference, I was told that, uh, well, I was completely wrong because the large current account imbalances, they were just, um, well, benign equilibrium phenomena. They were showing that capital markets were working just fine. So much for content. Let me just add some quantitative empirics to the story of our popularity. Um, in 2008, we had only 187 registered participants. So we grew much faster than the Eurozone economy and even the world economy <laughs> during that time. <laughs> Um, we had about 75 papers compared to 140 papers today, and uh, because of fewer papers, we started on Friday. Um, well, we don't even remember that we start this conference on Friday. We now always start on Thursday. We also have expanded the scope of our activities. Our working paper series is one of our latest projects. Launched last year, it has increasingly gained in outreach. We now have around 40 working papers in this series, and on RAPEC ideas, our forum, which is very young, um, is now ranking at par with a number of medium-sized German economics departments, and I think this is quite good for 18 months or so uh, being on REPEC. One of the main objectives of the FMM and also of the Macroeconomic Policy Institute, which is helping in organizing this conference, has always been to bring together young economists who are discontent with prevailing orthodoxy and who are eager to explore new and more useful ways of doing economics. In this context, I'm particularly happy that we had the Young Scholar Initiative here today and that students were able to interact this morning. I'm also happy here that we have a booth of the Netzwerk Plurale Ökonomik, the German network for pluralism in economics in the foyer outside. Additionally, especially for the younger colleagues, I know many of you have been there this morning, we had again a pre-conference workshop. That was the one where we had many more people there showing up than were signed up for. Um, and, uh, well, I think this speaks for itself. Um, in addition, like each year, tomorrow morning, we will have six parallel graduate student sessions starting at 11.30 a.m., and we will have 24 excellent papers by young colleagues. So try, and I would very much recommend you going there and not skipping that to visit Berlin. The weather is pretty ugly anyway, so rather go to the graduate session. Um, one more thing for the young students, young colleagues. Next year, our research network will hold our seventh summer school on Keynesian economics and European economic policies for advanced students and young researchers. It is scheduled from July 28th until the 2nd of August, and you may find additional information in your conference folder. So, I would like to encourage everyone here in the room to apply and please, well, the young people, the elder ones don't need that, but the younger people to apply and please spread the word uh, around your friends. So, so much for advertisement. Um, let us now focus on the present event. The conference is titled, as I already said, 10 years after the crash, what have we learned? I think this is an extremely timely topic at a time when financial market regulation is being turned back, especially in the United States. And I think it's maybe only a matter of time when that will happen in Europe. At the moment, I'm still, we can still be a bit more optimistic, 
Probably that has to do with the fact that we have been in crisis mode longer than the U.S. economy, and it's, the, the memory is fresher. But if history is a, a guide, at some point, um, the regulation calls for deregulation, deregulation usually become loud again. I'm particularly happy that the organizing committee has managed to bring together a combination of eminent heterodox economists on the one hand, such as Amit Baduri, Engelbert Stockhammer, Stefanie Seguino, and Tom Ferguson, with a number of no less important eminent mainstream economists. We have Martin Helwig here. He's probably one of the most famous German economists. We have um, Esther Faia here and Rudiger Bachmann. And uh, on the other hand, in addition, we also have brought in for the plenary sessions um, such uh, economists with broad experience in policy making, such as Elena Schubert and Laszlo Andor. I'm not mentioning all these people who are presenting in the parallel sessions, because that would take too much time. But if you go through the names, you will find out that there are a lot of people you know from the literature as well. Um, in just a few minutes, the first plenary session will be on has capitalism become more stable, which basically sums up the unease many of us have with the current state of the world economy. Tomorrow, we will move to the question in how far macroeconomic theory has progressed in the past decades. And on Saturday, we will end with a panel on policy implications. Besides the plenaries, I should also mention the tremendous amount of very interesting papers we received in the conference and have in the parallel sessions. As I mentioned before, we had to reject more than half of the submissions. And um, with about 140 parallel sessions, the conference is, or parallel presentations, the conference is fully booked out. By the way, you can download most of the complete papers through the conference web page. Moreover, one more thing on the logistics. As we have already done in the past years, we will not only video record the plenary sessions for documentation, but we will also send a live stream of the plenaries. So of course you are all here, so you don't really need a live stream, uh, unless you want a second stream, but it doesn't make much sense. But you can spread the word around your friends um, and your colleagues who are not able to be here. And we encourage you to do so. At this point, I cannot resist the temptation to point out that here, we are at least half a decade ahead of the Verein für Sozialpolitik, the German Economist Association, because we have been streaming our sessions for a number of years now, and the Verein für Sozialpolitik has not managed to stream the main plenaries yet. I hope they will also follow us here. Um, okay, similar to past conferences, we will later publish a selection of papers in our European Journal of Economics and Economic Policies, in short, EGIP. And the publisher, by the way, Etwa Elga, has a table outside and is happy to tell you more about this journal and about the papers and proceedings of previous conferences. You can also find a desk out here with free copies of publications of the Macroeconomic Policy Institute. And um, tomorrow, there will be another booth outside with a simulation project on different um, macroeconomic policy paradigms. Before we now start with the plenary session, I would especially like to thank the Hans Böckler Foundation for all the generous support they have given us here, and of course for funding this conference. A special thanks does not only go to the academic conference organization committee, but especially to those who have done the organization on the ground, the team from the Macroeconomic Policy Institute, and I would like to name here Sabine Nemitz and Jennifer Büssen, who are mainly responsible for organizing events like this, but also our student assistant, Dennis Goldschlich, and, and our intern, Vanessa Zimmermann. Okay, so that's, thanks. <clears throat> so, um, that's enough from me. Thank you very much for coming, and I wish you all a very thought-provoking and interesting conference over the next three days, and I'll hand over to Sebastian. Thanks. Well.